And hello, we are live. Welcome to the show. Sorry, I'm a little bit late um, and I'm a little bit tired as well, hence the uh, slightly drawn and jaded uh, look. It's been a pretty crazy couple of days. Um, I was in Berlin until um, the weekend and then I came back into the UK, which is kind of tiring. Um, I was out last week. If you saw the live stream I did with Tom Torero, had quite a late night last Thursday, I think it was, which was a lot of fun. Uh, and then doing other bits of work and stuff like that as well. But back here in London for the time being um, and going live with you lucky guys. And today, what I wanted to talk about really today is freedom and with particular emphasis on a book called How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World by Harry Brown. So if you haven't heard of that, I wanted to introduce that or introduce you to that book. Now, because what I'm looking at doing going forward is basically doing three of these streams per week. So I'm, go I'm gearing up basically with the live work. So I'm not gonna go every day because I think there is some value in uh, doing shorter video content as well, which I still like to do. So there's little more like little clip type videos or 10 minute videos where I'm talking about a particular concept or a particular idea. But I do think that going live on a more regular basis is uh, a good thing for me to, to do or at least to try. So what the plan is uh, at the moment is I'm going to do Monday, Wednesday and Friday and I'm going to do 11.30 a.m. Um, EST, which is the same time as uh, Rule Zero goes live on a Saturday. So I'll do um, 11.30 EST. And we're going to talk about various different things on the stream. We're not just going to be talking about dating, although obviously that will... Um, oh, that camera's gone. That obviously will... Uh, um, form... Some of it, because that's obviously kind of what you come to this channel for. But we're not just just going to be talking about dating. We're also going to be talking about other issues um, as well around the topic of freedom and around the topic of just living a good life as a guy in 2020. Because, um, you know, when it comes down to it, what are we really here for other than to, you know, enjoy our existence on this planet for as long as we possibly can in the most in the best way that we possibly can right so um and i've been thinking about you know retitling this stream i've been thinking i was talking to rich cooper and rich cooper said you know you want to brand the uh you want to brand the show you want to brand the stream and obviously he's got um before the train wreck um and the branding there is around you know looking at dudes who have reach that sort of pivotal point in their lives, that point of, of desperation and destruction and sort of talking them down off the ledge, if you like. Um, and then you've got people like, um, you know, Red Mornings that Ryan Stone does, obviously an emphasis on Red Pill. Uh, and, uh, and, and John MLD has got Interview with a Man. And I was doing a show called um, Gold Standard, which I launched at the beginning of the year, if you guys may remember that sort of pre-corona, I was I was branding my streams as gold standard. And, um, you know, I think that's a decent name. There's no particular reason why, um, why I can't continue to use that. But I have been sort of toying with the idea of talking about using the word free. And I've been thinking about going for something like Free Man Live um, because I think fundamentally the core concept that I want to talk about here, the core concept that I want to get across is freedom of choice for guys. And that is freedom of choice in terms of your dating life. Yes. So that is the freedom of choice to meet different girls, meet different women that you're attracted to, have abundance, have choice, um, you know, not to just be stuck in that sort of mainstream matrix of dating, but be able to break out of that and to, you know, have lots of fun and exciting experiences with beautiful ladies all over the world. If, if, if you wish. Um, but also, but it goes beyond that, doesn't it? It's not just about dating. It's not just about meeting girls, as people remind me on Twitter the whole time. You know, there must be something more to life than this. Well, yes, there is, you know, and what life really is about is being the best version of yourself 
that you can be. And I don't mean that in a sort of cheesy kind of new agey motivational way, but you know, you want to be having a good life. And that means, you know, you want to have as many choices and options in your life as you can possibly muster, because if you've got no options, then you are screwed. And the more options that you have, the more choices that you have, and that translates into the more freedom that you have, broadly speaking, the better, because who doesn't want more options, right? You know, we look at the Tates and they will talk about um, having multiple passports. Okay, so why would you want multiple passports? Well, because we, well, we've just seen the fact that the entire planet more or less can shut down uh, almost overnight. You know, we've seen, we've witnessed that this year. Now, going forward, um, I hope that we're not going to see a global lockdown that's quite as extreme as what we saw at the beginning of this year. I think what's more likely is we're going to see localized, smaller lockdowns, if anything. And, you know, there are going to be places that you can go that will remain relatively normal. I think that's how things are going to go down. So the more freedom that you've got, like maybe you've got different passports so that you can go to different territories, but certainly... Perhaps you have freedom because of how you earn your living. You know, you're not tied down to one location. You're not tied down to one country. You're not tied down to one city, one relationship, one government. You know, you have freedom in your life. Then that is going to stand you in good stead because we have seen in 2020 just how easy it is for our freedoms to evaporate almost overnight. And I, let's not go into the whys and wherefores of, of what happened. We all kind of know what happens, whether it was justified or not is, is another thing. But the truth of the matter is, we've seen now that the freedoms that we take for granted, it's very easy for them to just be removed. And, and something of the same kind could happen again very soon. So freedom in all of its many hues has to be the thing that we all focus on. Now, as I said, we get into this because we are interested in dating. We're interested in meeting girls. We're interested in meeting women and expanding our horizons in the dating arena. Okay. But what does that really mean? Well, what it really means when it comes down to it is we want the freedom to, to date the kind of girls that we want to date. Okay. And that's why people learn about game. That's why people learn about dating dynamics because um, they believe with justification that they are going to be able to meet the kinds of women that they want to meet through mastering those techniques. OK, so uh, Mr. ECT says, if you take two minute dump at 23.59, it's basically the same shit on a different day. Profound. These are the kinds of issues that we want to get into on this stream. So if anyone's got any thoughts on that, then uh, put them in the chat. But these are the kinds of profound issues that we want to be um interrogating uh in this series of of live streams so yeah freedom is really really important okay and um i've always been broadly speaking a libertarian now i don't mean libertarian with a, a large l i don't mean the libertarian party in the united states uh, of america um but i think broadly speaking you know having libertarian tendencies as well as libertine tendencies, which is something slightly different, um, has always been where I'm coming from. So while I, you know, and I don't really want to get into party politics here, but while I think Trump is a, is, a, is an entertaining character and there's many good things about him, uh, you know, I'm not here banging the drum for, for, for the Republicans. I'm not banging the drum for the left or the far left. I'm banging the drum for personal freedom okay and it's whoever it's whichever party is going to afford me the most personal freedom possible is likely to be the one that i'm going to be most interested in but the truth of the matter is that really none of the major parties these days are particularly in favor of personal freedom you know there's a, there's a big sort of gap here um because both both the left and the right in their own way tend towards a kind of collectivism you know if you look at the tradcons on the right what are they espousing other than a call for collectivism? You know, if we all do this, if we all go back to the 1950s, if we all, you know, bring in these kinds of social restrictions, then everything will be OK again. Um, and of course, on the other side of that, you get if you go far left enough, you get to communism, which is, uh, you know, another form of collectivism as well. I'm not particularly interested in collectivism. It's not my back. You know, I 
prefer to be a lone wolf. I prefer to play the, the game that I'm going to play. You know, I have alliances with people, um, you know, I, and I have friendships with people, but certainly alliances with people. Um, and that's great. But in the end, you want to be playing your own game because why rely too much on other people? Why rely too much, you know, on people who might let you down? Because this is the fact of the matter. People let us down in life, don't they? Um, Gregor says, Bitcoin equals self-sovereignty equals freedom. Um, stack hard homies. Yeah, absolutely. And this is something else that we can get into as we're doing more of these streams, because, uh, you know, I am not uh, the world's greatest uh, crypto expert, but I know people who do know a lot about it, not least John MLD, um, you know, his mate Charlie, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, again, these are the sorts of things that we want to be considering here, because it's yes, you want to have a varied and prolific and exciting and whatever dating life, but more almost more importantly than that, you need to have freedom in these other parts of your life as well. If you've got freedom financially, if you've got the freedom not to be stuck in a particular town in a particular country doing your job, then that is going to just massively benefit you in this new reality that we now find ourselves in. Um, and it's also going to benefit you in terms of the dating as well, because as I said to a dude on um twitter the other day uh or a guy on twitter the other day mentioned how he'd seen something that i i talked about in a stream or um or, or on a video and i basically said you know attractive girls are not necessarily um tied down to dismal boring nine to five jobs okay they are they tend to have well the smart ones tend to have more autonomy they tend to have more freedom they tend to be about more during the day and so you know if you want to if you want to get to know those women, if you want to infiltrate that class of, you know, slightly more leisurely, less tied down to a rote kind of routine kind of people, individuals, then, you know, you need to you need to build in that personal freedom into your life as well. You know, you need to, you know, make make sure that you're not stuck with that nine to five job. You need to make sure that you have the ability to travel. You need to make sure that you are not, you know just a plow horse for the system in your particular country. Um, and the most successful guys are those who really are international. You know, they can slip here, they can slip there. They're not tied down. They're not, you know, kind of like forced to remain in a particular place and just compl complain. If things aren't going how they want them to go, then they can just go and leave and, you know, bugger off somewhere else for a bit, you know. Um, and there is this class, and Tim Ferriss talked about this in the 4-Hour Work Week many years ago. There is this class now of people who are, um, <clears throat> you could call them the new rich, if you like, but it's not even necessarily about being rich in the sense of having a ton of money. It's just the ability to travel, the ability not to be tied down, working remotely, or better still, not working for anybody else, working for yourself, um, but being able to work from your laptop, and that means being able to travel around, do the digital nomad thing, you know, you're in a much better position, okay? And for me, freedom has always been the highest aspiration that I have, and it remains the case until now, because I don't want to be tied down in any particular situation, you know, I don't want to be tied down to a particular job, or a particular uh, location, or a particular... Um, whatever, you know, like I want to have choice, I want to have freedom. And so that's really what we're going to be talking about here on these live streams. But obviously, with the emphasis on dating and game, because that's kind of, you know, what the price of admission is, is, is for. That's what a lot of, um, I know, the viewers of this channel want to hear about. So we will be talking about a lot of that stuff. And we'll be talking about some of the problems as well. Um, because there are problems in modern society, without a doubt, for people who lack freedom. And I don't want this, well, maybe I do want it to become a, a very red meat kind of channel because that will probably get me millions of views and it will be great. But I mean, like, I, I don't I don't want to cynically just like harvest all of the red meat um, like other people do. I mean, I'll, I'll pay lip service to it and stuff like that. But you know, these channels and every single video is just like, oh, my God, look at these look at these women. Look at how they're behaving. Isn't that terrible? Blah, blah, blah. Um, or, you know, look at the Democrats, look what they're doing, or look at X group of people in X state in the USA, 
isn't what they're doing horrendous. Um, and it's a clickbaity title and you get that anger. People like clicking and go, oh, yeah, they, that is terrible. <clears throat> and then the guy gets like 200,000 subscribers and whatever. I mean, that is a very um, <laughs> lucrative model for YouTube. And it's a very lucrative model for building your brand. But it's also a little bit gimmicky. And it's not necessarily the route that I I want to really tie my mask to. If you, if you like, or tie my sail to that mast, if you like, because I'd rather be a bit more sort of like considered about this stuff. But nevertheless, without doubt, there are problems in society, okay, uh, in, in Western society and the societies that we find ourselves in, which mean that we need to find different solutions, which means that having this ability to, to create freedom from ourselves is so beneficial okay and so we'll also look at some of those issues as well i think going forward in these broadcasts um and that means you know looking at sort of things that are happening in the sexual marketplace looking at the way that uh, the genders are interrelating looking at the dating scene etc etc because all of that stuff is the context right all of that stuff is the context from which the need to learn game, the need to become location independent, the need to make more money, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Those needs spring from the context. So we also do need to be aware of the context as well. There's a video on this channel about the uh, global, modern global dating marketplace, um, which if you haven't seen, I mean, do take a look at it. It's uh, It's been up for a while now. It was, it was basically a sort of a, pra a, tra a trailer really for the uh, Charisma and Dating Academy, which I run. But um, in that, I talk a lot about the, the current dating marketplace, the fact that it's global, the fact that the girl in the Russian village is on Instagram and she's going to be hit, getting hit up by guys in Dubai and uh, Monaco and, you know, all the rest of it. Uh, and, and that is a, a prevalent reality in our society. And that things like that and that's only one example um are very good reasons why you need to start to create more options for yourself you need to start to find ways to hack the dating model if you like you know and the way that you do that is through holistic game okay it's not being reliant on one channel it's not just being reliant on day game it's not just being reliant on um, you know, nightclubs, because nightclubs are closed now, you know, so if you're relying on nightclubs, you're screwed. Um, it's not just being reliant on a particular dating app, or, you know, a particular social circle you're in, or whatever, you need to be a renaissance man, as far as dating is concerned, you know, you need to spread your, um, not your legs, you need to spread your, um, your streams of income, if you like, so that you are able to, uh, just 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 basically get the the most opportunities coming into your pipeline uh and, and and create as much freedom of choice for yourself as you possibly can okay and as i say this is dating but it's also all these other areas of life as well now i have been quite fortunate because i've been doing this for a you know a couple of years now and i've got through doing this stuff and when i say that i mean youtube obviously for this channel's been going for about a year and a few months, I think, year and a half maybe. Um, but obviously in the years preceding that, I've been doing a lot of writing for my own website, for other people's websites. I've written a, a, quite a large number of books about dating and stuff like that. So I've been in this sort of space creating content for quite a long time now, about six years or so. And through that, I, I've been fortunate enough to meet a lot of the, I suppose, the movers and shakers in this space, if you like, some of the prominent guys at the forefront of this stuff, as well as other less well-known characters. And, um, you know, what that has given me is this insight into these people who, who aren't playing by the rules, who are creating freedom of choice for themselves, um, just through having had the chutzpah to get up and be like, listen, I'm just, I'm not gonna accept the status quo. I'm not just gonna do what everybody else does. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, build my life in a different way. There was a thing a little while ago, I don't know if you remember, people used to talk about um, what they would call lifestyle design. And it's a little bit of a cheesy 
term in a, in a way, but it was this whole thing about you can design the lifestyle that you want to live. You know, you don't have to be sitting in that office in the tower block with the fluorescent lights. Um, you can do something more fun instead. You can be in the airport in Zurich working on your, you know, latest product, waiting to fly back to London before you then fly on to Amsterdam or whatever it is. You know, you can be having a much more interesting life because of the way that the world works now, particularly because of the connectivity that is afforded us by the internet. Now, I read a lot about this stuff when I, you know, a few years ago, when I was sort of contemplating making the leap into this space. Um, I read Tim Ferriss, The 4-Hour Workweek. I was really into Pat Flynn, um, some Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, all of this kind of stuff. And um, the great thing about actually coming into this space and meeting these people is that I've now actually interacted with guys who are, who, are, who are doing this. They're not just talking about it. They're not just creating blog posts about it. They're actually out there doing it. And um, that is very, very powerful because you can see just how possible it is to create a lifestyle that's not only better for you, um, but it's also more attractive for others as well. Okay. So look, what I'd like you to do, and some guys have put some questions already in the chat, stick any questions that you've got regarding dating game, uh, but also any of this stuff that we're talking about, that is to say building freedom of choice into your life. And we'll get to them a little bit further on into the, the broadcast. Okay. Um, I mean, as I say, my focus really is always going to be on the dating stuff at the moment anyway. And that's why I haven't quite decided on a, a title for this yet. I might just call it Troy Live for the time being. Um, because I think talking about the, the dating stuff and the sexual marketplace stuff is probably my speciality. And as I say, I know it's why a lot of people come to this channel in the first place. But having said that, you know, we also need to consider the other things because in the end, your life isn't compartmentalized into these separate things. It's not just like, right, dating's over here and then work's here and then fitness is here. Um, I mean, you can choose to view it like that if you want, but the reality is that each one of those things affects the other one. And, you know, you want to be in a situation where each of them are optimized and they're feeding into one another in a way that's going to give you the, the greatest efficiency that you can attain, obtain. So that's really what I want to talk about um, on these particular shows. Um, Adam says, when do you think flights into the US will be allowed? Uh, total ball lake at the moment. I don't know, man. I mean, I wish I knew. So basically, as you will be no doubt aware by now, um, the Rule Zero events, which was meant to take place in Vegas, that's obviously not on. Uh, well, it is on, but it's on online. So we're, we're now doing a two-day online conference with lots more speakers, lots more special things planned. It's going to be awesome, 2nd and 3rd of October. But unfortunately, the, uh, the American... Um, location for the for the live in person event has been scrapped because basically nobody can get there except for people who are already in the states. Um, but even those people, there are some issues with traveling across across state lines. Um, and Vegas itself is has been pretty screwed um, over the last few months. There's something like a seventy percent drop in occupancy rates in hotels over there. Uh, pretty seismic, really, in terms of the activity over there. So, you know, th this whole year really has been kind of screwed as a result of the virus, as we all know. When will flights into the US be allowed? Uh, I don't know. Where are you flying from? Are you based in the UK? Because I was looking at this myself. I was having a look at this, obviously, to see whether I could travel into the US. And I realized that I couldn't. Um, but then I was looking at, would there be different ways? Like if I didn't fly from the UK, but I flew from somewhere else. And it seems like all of the routes are blocked off because even, I think even Canada is closed. So the idea of say, maybe going to Canada and then trying to enter via Canada, um, was not, uh, amenable either. But having said that about a week or so ago, I did see a headline 
that said that they were looking at creating what they're calling travel corridors between um, the UK and New York. So I haven't heard anything about that since, but it wouldn't surprise me if that happens at some point quite soon, because New York is a very popular, important destination for people from the UK. There's a lot of obviously tourism between the two, but also uh, a lot of business between the two as well. And so I wouldn't be ex extraordinarily surprised if um, that opens up and it becomes an option to fly from London to New York again uh, quite soon. But there again, I mean, travel isn't a lot of fun at the moment. That's the other problem. You know, I mean, I was just in Berlin, as I said, and I came back um, Saturday and Berlin is, is great. I mean, it's fine. It's pretty much open. But there again, London is it, it feels a lot more normal now than it did a couple of months ago. Uh, and um, the flight was fine, actually. I mean, there wasn't any major problems, but it was just kind of like you've got to sit there wearing that mask the whole time. So you went to the airport and obviously as soon as you get in the airport, you've got to wear the mask. Well, you've got to wear the mask actually on the train to the airport. Then you're in the airport, you're wearing the mask. Then you're wait, you go through customs, you're waiting for the plane, you're wearing the mask, you're on the plane, wearing the mask, get out the other side, go through the border, wearing the mask. Then you get on the train to get back to central London or wherever you're going. You're wearing the mask for, I mean, I was wearing the bloody thing for about six hours and um, I'm not like, a, you know, and being anti-mask is not a hill that I'm really going to die on. I'm quite happy that we're allowed just to go out, to be honest. Um, so, you know, if you have to, I've got a load of bandanas. I just stick them on if you've got to wear that, whatever. Um, but at the same time, I have to say for five or six hours of wearing one is not, is not great. And um, that's on a very short flight. That's on a flight that's 90 minutes. So um, to have to then fly to New York, which is like a six or seven hour flight, and then go through all the crap on either side of, um, you know, the customs and everything on either side of that journey, <sighs> you know, it, do it doesn't really make you that enthusiastic. Um, Suleiman says, was that um, French guy fun in the bar? So this is a reference to um, the other night when I was in Berlin and uh, I was out with Tom Sorero and we ended up talking to this French dude in a bar um, at the end of the, uh, at, sort of at the end of the video, really. Um, I think fun is probably not, the word I would use to describe him. He was a very nice guy. And after we um, switched the cameras off, we just, we carried on chatting to him for a while. And he was okay. He was a nice guy, but um, it wasn't uh, kind of the, the most uproarious sort of like uh, party kind of end to the night that you could, you could hope for. He was a pretty square kind of a middle-aged kind of French dude, but he was all right. He was very nice. Um, he lives around there as well, I think. So uh he invited us back whenever we wanted to go back. Uh, so deforestation says business and pleasure and gold standard were both fire. Well, listen, like I say, I mean, thank you very much for that. Um, business and pleasure is a series that I did a little while ago now. That's actually, I think that's even going back onto my old channel. So that's kind of like going, that's going back a little way. Um, gold standard is the name that I've had for um earlier in the, the year for my live streams and i might just revive gold standard to be honest because you know it's it's as good a name as any i'm just thinking do i select a name that kind of means something a bit more and i was thinking of this um free man live because i want to talk about you know and then i'm obviously getting guys on interviewing them talking about how they've created freedom in their lives for dating for game um but also for finance crypto uh, travel, whatever it is. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm still thinking about it at the moment, but I'll, uh, I'll decide at, at some point. Um, yeah, the stream was fun. I've taken it down. Um, I'm going to probably just do a shorter edit because it was bloody long. I mean, we were on for about three hours and it was probably quite fun at the time, but, um, I think it needs, a, it needs to be trimmed down a little bit because, uh, there were some dead bits of dead time and things like that, but it was quite like, it was quite a good laugh. Um, definitely quite fun to do. Um, and that, by the way, is something that I'm quite keen to, to do more of, you know, like live streaming, but not just sitting in a room, but actually live streaming out and about. And that was the first time that I really tested it when we were in Berlin. Um, and as you saw, if you watched that stream, we were talking to all these random people who were coming in. Uh, people were watching it afterwards and saying, 
well, where were all the beautiful girls and where were all the sort of... And the thing was, it wasn't meant to be a kind of a glamorous sort of like RSD video. It was it was meant to be a bit of a joke, really. It was meant to be sort of... We were playing up on that degeneracy angle and it was kind of meant to... It was meant to showcase the sort of slightly more down at heel aspects of, of Berlin, which I think it kind of did, but... Uh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, um, yeah, it it, it it wasn't particularly glamorous, put it that way. But it was a lot of fun. Um, so Matt says, um, any thoughts on traveling, holidaying, solo in your thirties? Most friends are in a long term relationship or married. Well, yeah. I mean, like you know, I have traveled extensively um, on my own. Um, from my late twenties through my thirties and then into my forties. And, um, you know, in many ways I prefer to travel on my own. It's funny cause I was saying on Twitter the other day, like sometimes, sometimes, you know, when you're, when you're doing this, when you're in this line of work, you know, you, you'll get people trying to throw shade at you and people will say, Oh, you know, look at his Instagram. There's just pictures of him on his own. He's got no friends and all this kind of thing, which is obviously bollocks. I mean, the reason that I, um, don't uh, regularly post uh, pictures of other people on Instagram is because it's it's like a business Instagram, and you know some people don't want to be associated with uh, my CD degenerate um, line of work and um, content and so on. And you know, like, and obviously, you know, I have a girlfriend; I have to respect her privacy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so it, it's, but it's a bad faith argument. You know, they're just saying that because it's a way to try and to try and get you. But the thing that um, is makes me laugh about it is that you get these dudes online who are always banging on about being a Sigma. You know, like, yes, I'm a Sigma male. I'm so Sigma. You know, I don't run with the pack. I'm a, you know, I, d I, don't, I don't buy into the hierarchy or anything like that. And then you get the same guys or guys from the same sort of like groups coming in, they're going, oh my God, like uh, this guy's got no friends. And it's like, well, well like, which one are you? Do you know what I mean? Because if you're some dude who's just banging on about his mates all the time and how, like, you know, he can't survive, he can't go for a piss without a friend of his coming with him because, you know, like, he's he's too scared to be independent, um, then you are certainly not the super cool Sigma male that you claim to be, you know. And a lot of people, this Sigma thing, you know, a lot of people talk the talk, but they don't really walk the walk. You know, they claim to be Sigma online, but actually... The truth of the matter is they need a bunch of guys around them to make them feel good about themselves. They can't hack it on their own. OK, you know, they just they they're, they're not mentally strong enough to travel alone. They're not mentally strong enough to go out alone. They're not mentally strong enough to thrive during periods of aloneness. And by the way, notice I don't say loneliness. I say aloneness. And of course, there is a difference between those two things, because to be alone uh, by choice is not to be lonely. In fact, to be alone by choice can be one of the greatest pleasures in life. If you are a sort, certain sort of person, you know, if you tend towards introvertism, if you genuinely are something of a sigma, then being alone is, is great and it's enjoyable and it's very productive and it can be very productive in terms of work, um, but it can also be very productive in terms of game because to be honest, a lot of the time with game, you know, you're going out with um, mates and they don't always help very much. So, um, so yeah, traveling solo, going outside, all that kind of stuff. You know, I am um, a past master at all of that. And, um, yeah, I mean, you know, like in terms of advice, you've just got to kind of crack. You've just got to kind of crack on with it, really. I mean, there's, you know, you book a trip, book a short trip. Don't necessarily book like, you know, four weeks in the uh in the amazon or something like that you know but just book like say book a weekend book a city break go to like prague or go to paris or go to amsterdam or you know wherever you can get to at the moment with the travel restrictions um and just ease yourself into it um see how it goes but it's it's eminently possible i mean you know like and, and really what do you do when you travel anyway i mean i like to stay in a i like to get some kind of nice accommodation re near the center, uh, if possible. Um, and I like to, um, you know, 
get up in the morning, maybe do a bit of reading, do a bit of writing, uh, do a little bit of uh, journaling perhaps or whatever, and then have a coffee and then walk around, look at the sights, maybe then do a bit of game, whatever. You know, I like, I enjoy having that freedom. I enjoy having that ability to kind of do my own thing and not to worry too much about somebody else and somebody else's like, you know, demands on my time sort of thing. So when I was in Berlin last week, um, I met up with friends on a few of the days. There's a dude over there called Andrew, who's a, I've known for a number of years. Um, he's also a photographer. So I met up with him and we were hanging out and we were doing some photos for like my social media. I was chilling out, had a bite to eat and that kind of stuff. That was really good. Um, I have another friend over there, this, uh, this other bloke who's like a South African guy. I always meet up with him and talk about like politics and, and stuff because he's like a uh, humorous, uh, humorously right wing kind of good dude. So we always like, you know, have a bit of a chat about politics and things. So met up with him for a bite to eat one evening. And then Tom Torero was in town. So we were hanging out um, for two or three of the days. But even then, you know, you, like he was staying in his in his <laughs> in the van. Um, I was staying in my place. Um, I was also doing work. I was also going to the gym every day. Um, and going around doing my own thing. And it's sort of like, uh, I like to do my own thing. I don't like to be too tied to somebody else. I mean, it's nice to meet up and it's nice to, yeah, go for a coffee, go for a bite to eat, whatever. But I don't want to be hanging around them 24 seven. It's like Jesus, you know, but that's just me. I mean, like everyone's different, you know, some people, they just really thrive on socializing. Some people just really thrive on being surrounded by people. I, I just sort of don't really. I mean, I'm more of a natural introvert. That's not to say that I can't turn it on when I go into the social setting, you know, and I mean, perhaps I've overcompensated in my life because I've maybe taken it too far the other way. But, um, you know, um, in the end, I do actually like my own um, company because, I mean, what could be better than this, right? So, yeah, you know, it, but it, it depends. So you've got to you've got to look at yourself honestly and think: oh, Are you that sort of person? But solo trips and stuff is great, and it, it's sort of like it's character building um, as well, in the sense that um, yeah, you know, you can. Um, it's good to go and do things on your own. It's good to go and experience things on your own from time to time. We're joking about saving the West. Absolutely not. Saving the West is never a joke. Saving the West is very serious. In fact, I might when I do the stream, I might just call the stream Saving the West. And each episode we can discuss different ways in which we can save the West. Um, and maybe if we all pull together, we can like get it saved. Maybe before the end of the year. It'd be quite good if we could go into Christmas having saved the West. And then we could just put this whole thing to bed. And then in 2021, we can just like relax and I don't know, go to the beach or something instead. So Saving the West is a very serious matter. Uh, and not to be joked about. Right, so David, okay, so this is a good one. David says, any advice for those wanting to leave the corporate world, especially with golden handcuffs? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, this is a really difficult thing, and this is the situation that I was in a few years ago because I was in a job that was pretty well paid. I mean, I wasn't, you know, at my height, I was making six figures. And that's why everyone bangs on, you know, like, yeah, man, got to make six figures. At the height of my work in that arena, I was making, I was about making the six figures. So I had a pretty good, um, I had a pretty good lifestyle. You know, I had property. I've still got property, but, you know, I, had, I managed to buy property. Um, and, you know, I had pretty good life, was going out, eating out, not not, not like that. Um, I was going out eating dinners in cool places and going for drinks and having lots of nice trips and things like that. So, I, you know, but at the same time, I, I'm not trying to say I was a massive baller. I wasn't like, you know, kind of, at the, I wasn't like some kind of like master of the universe hedge fund guy, but I was doing okay. I was doing all right. And living in London, it's an expensive place. I was doing okay. And I was really in that situation that he talks about here, which is to have golden handcuffs. That is to say, it's it's very hard when you have that to just say, all right, sod it. I'm just going to go and be a blogger and write articles about, you know, meeting girls and, you know, kind of kind of hope it works. It's it's very hard 
that's a very extreme jump to make as well. But it's 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 hard. On some level, I was always aware that I wasn't happy doing what I was doing, and I wanted to get out and I wanted to do something else. But you know, even the thought of like downscaling to downsizing to the point of I don't know, say work working for an animal charity or something like that, where it's a bit more meaningful. You know, it's it's a really big consideration to do something like that when you know you're going to be earning a lot less money. Um, and and so this is how people get tied into these kinds of jobs, and that's what they call golden handcuffs. And um, I was I had that problem for a long time. You know, I, I stayed in that line of work for far longer than really I wanted to, or that I, or that I probably should have done and to be honest it was largely because i was afraid of what might happen on the other side i was afraid of what would happen when i threw off those golden handcuffs and went out on my own you know so it is largely fear that holds you back but at the same time you know let's be realistic um you, you've also got to have some sort of a plan you know you, you like i wouldn't advise anybody to just be like all right listen i'm just going to have my notice in tomorrow and let the chips fall where they may um because you know like there are realities you know you've got to pay the bills you've got to pay the mortgage if you've got one or you've got to pay the rent or you know whatever it is so this is not an easy thing to do by any means but it is possible it's certainly possible you know people can people do this stuff people leave the corporate world all the time and they go on and do other things um i've known many people to have left and to have gone on to do other things even if it's something like going and running a, a bed and breakfast which if you're in the uk we have these things called bed and breakfasts which are um small uh, privately run hotels um and people will go to like the late you know Somewhere in the countryside, they'll buy a property with like six rooms, five, six rooms in it. They'll rent out the rooms and they'll, they'll make a mini hotel. Even something like that. You know, I've, I've known people to break out the corporate world to do that. Is that the world's best business opportunity? Probably not. You're not going to be buying Lambos and things. But, you know, you're probably a lot happier than you were <laughs> when you were, you know, filling in your Excel sheets, uh, spreadsheets in the, in the horribly illuminated office in the middle of the city. OK, so... You know, there are. I've seen a lot of people escape in different ways and do different things. You, you know, you need to have a plan, um, and in the end, you need to just cut the cord. Really, you need to find a way just to. It's like any of these things. It's like how do I break up my relationship? How do I start doing day game? How do I, do, you know, in, in the end, as much as you can ask people for advice, the only advice in the end is you've just got to do it. You know, it's like, how do I talk to a girl that I'm attracted to? Well, you, you've kind of just got to make yourself do it, you know, and then keep doing it until um, it becomes less uncomfortable for you. Um, I mean, with these big life decisions, I, I was forced over a number of years to to make some pretty big moves in my life because of kind of external circumstances, really. I mean, like one company I was at, they there was a merger and some some new people management took over and they wanted to get rid of a load of the older people including myself so i was kind of pushed in that regard and then i went on to work at, at some other places after that but the writing was kind of on the wall because the other thing to be aware of as well as regards corporate work is that you have this perception that on the one side there is stability and on the other side the self-employment side, let's say, there is uncertainty and danger and fear. But it became increasingly clear to me as time went on that actually the corporate side was as dangerous, if not more dangerous, than the self-employment side. Because I was fully aware, I was fully aware that I could get thrown out. I mean, yes, you've got a contract with the company. You, you're, pro you're maybe on a month's notice or three months' notice or something like that, whatever it is. Um, but they can get rid of you. I mean, they don't care. You know, you're too old. You're too expensive. You know, um, automation was beginning to come in into the industry I was in and sort of have, it, have its effect. Automation will come into a lot of industries and shake things up. And, and this was pre-COVID, you know, I mean, like, God only knows at the moment. I mean, like, 
pre-COVID, you know, you look back and it almost seems like a golden age, really. Although, you know, there were a lot of problems. I mean, the, the, the media industry that I was in, you know, the internet was was causing a lot of problems. It was squeezing profits. Um, automation was causing a problem. Um, there were a lot of pressures on the industry. Um, and then you put COVID on top of that. And then on top of that, you put no deal Brexit. Um, and, you know, you're not looking at a very good time. I mean, it's one of the worst recessions in the UK at the moment than we've had for hundreds of years. It's, it's, I think it's the worst recession on record or something. So the idea that the corporate gig is secure and safe and you can just sit back and put your feet up and be like, oh, yeah, this is all right, I'm cruising, is a fallacy. It's just not true. Now, that's not to say that going and doing self-employment is secure and safe either. But there are some advantages. I mean, like, at least you've got control of the reins a little bit more. You know, like, um, in corporate work, you are, well, unless you're the CEO, I suppose. And even then, you've probably got the um, shareholders to to answer to. Um, you kind of have to go along with the party line. And the, the corporations aren't generally very nimble. You know, you can't just say in the corporation, oh, well, this product we're doing, I think it's actually a bit crap. I don't think people really want it. So why don't we just start doing this other one? You know, like it doesn't really work like that. Whereas when you're self-employed, when you're, a, when you're a, a one-man band business, you can kind of do what you want. You can say, right, I'm going to sell this, this product, put it out there. If it does well, good. If it doesn't do well, you can say, well, hang on a minute, that's kind of not really working. I think I'm going to pull that and I'm just going to do something else. You know, you've got a lot of agility. You can cut your costs very easily, you know, and you can't get fired because it's only you, you know. Um, so there are a lot of, of good points, you know, to the self-employed side of things. And as I say, it's not just like safety over here, danger over here. Actually, increasingly, you know, you could argue that there's more danger in the corporate world than there is in doing something else for yourself, whatever that may look like. Uh, Jack Napier. Um, well, I would hope you could tell by the shade of this white wall, which is slightly different to the shade of the white wall that I have in Berlin, that I'm actually now back in London. Um, this is a very London um, shade of, of white um, behind me. Uh, so, yeah, I am back in London at the moment. I don't know quite how long I'm staying or, or anything yet, but let's let's see. Let's see. Um, I wanted to. Yeah, job security doesn't exist anymore. It really, really doesn't. I did mention before about um, this book, uh, Freedom in an Unfree Free World by Harry Brown. And I think this is really important. So just to sort of like fulfill that promise, I, I'll just like give you a few of the main sort of like top line thoughts out of this book. I was looking back at my notes from Kindle for this and some of them have disappeared for some reason. But basically, this is a book that I got to know through Tom Torero, actually. And I think he got to know it through somebody who follows him who told him about it. It's a really, really good book just about libertarianism and being your own man, effectively, or woman, but, you know, being your own man. Called How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World by Harry Brown. Um, and the premise really is that we live in a world that is inherently unfree, okay, because there are a lot of um, beliefs and systems and environments around us that curtail our freedom, and we buy into those without even really thinking about it a lot of the time. So two of the key things he says are, you're, you're not aware of all the options available to you, or you don't think of all the options available to you, and you've accepted certain assumptions that restrict your freedom. Well, what are those assumptions? Well, it could be things like you've got to settle down, get married, and have a family. It could be the right thing to do is to get into a corporate job and work very hard and pay into your 401k or pay into your pension plan. You know, another assumption might be you've got to get on the housing ladder and buy a house, even though the mortgage is, you know, many times your annual salary. Um, it may be that you've got to vote for a certain political party because your parents voted for that party or because the people around you vote for that party. You know, there are all of these sort of assumptions and a lot of it, and I talk a lot on Twitter about societal expectations because a lot of us unconsciously just buy into societal expectations because we think that's what we're supposed to do. And you get this a lot with the traditionalists. Um, 
if you look at the traditionalists on Twitter, and their whole thing obviously is, you know, settle down, get married, you know, find a good, find a high quality woman, settle down, you know, couple of kids, uh, white picket fence, um, you know, and it, and it's all of this stuff, and they will they will f fight ruthlessly and fiercely to defend you know that that is absolutely the right thing that everybody should do and if you if that isn't what you're doing or that's not what you're interested in doing at the moment then you are a degenerate and you're evil and you're probably in league with moloch um and so on and so forth but why do they think those things because when you when you prod it a little bit and then you say well okay so why do you think that why do you think that that's the right thing to do what you discover is that they believe that those are the right things to do. There, there, there isn't, they haven't really logically thought about it. They haven't really interrogated their own thought processes. They're just basically parroting what other people have said to them, what their dad did, what their mum did, what their grandfather did, you know, whatever. They are, they're going along with the narrative, okay? And they haven't thought about, well, what if you just don't do any of that stuff? You know, like it's all very well to say, I mean, if you think about it, like when my father was a, a young man and he uh, had me as a kid when he was 24, which is pretty young in today's standards, you know, and that was just that was just what you did. You know, you were born, you went to school, you probably didn't go to university, you came out, you got a job, you found a high quality woman, you wifed her up. Um, you had a couple of kids and then you worked probably for the same firm until you dropped down dead. Um, and that was it. And the unfortunate thing for people of that generation and the preceding generations is that it wasn't as easy as it is now to do something different. So not only did they have the societal pressure, which, by the way, was a lot stronger you know, societal expectations back then were a lot stronger than they are now. So not only were they, you know, subject to those societal expectations, but also because of the way technology and society um, worked, they, you know, it was very, very hard to break out of that. It was very, very hard to do something different to that, particularly if you didn't have a lot of money. I mean, maybe if you had a lot of money, you could kind of do something different. But in the main, it was kind of hard to, to, to really break out of that. And so people would go along with that. And, you, you know, that... You can't really blame them for that. But then fast forward to now, to like, you know, 2020. And now, for a start, the expectations are nothing. Well, it, OK, it depends where you live. I mean, I live in a big city, so it's maybe it's a bit different. But, you know, by and large, societal expectations are not so stringent as they were in the 1950s, 1960s, 70s, whatever. You know, like increasingly. And if you move to a big city, people really don't give a damn what you do <laughs> you know it doesn't really matter so you've got that freedom as well you know um and because of the technology because we can work online because you know we can create a business for ourselves much more easily because we can travel really easily because of the instant connectivity that we've all got through the you know our phones and internationally and everything it, it's like you you don't have to buy into that societal narrative anymore you don't have to just do the default thing that everybody else did before you, you know. And this is what um, I think Harry Brown is talking about in this book, you know. Um, people just accept certain assumptions that restrict their own freedom. So you get the guy and uh, Brian says, nice ultra accent, thank you. I mean, you get the dude who's like, right, I found me a quality woman. Let's wife her up and uh, settle down and get the mortgage, you know, and all of that shit. And then guess what? Suddenly he's married to this this woman. I mean, who knows if in five years' time he likes her as much as he originally did. Now he's got the mortgage. Now he's got the kids. Now his freedom has gone from that to that. And, you know, why has he done it? Well, maybe he really loved that woman. You know, maybe he genuinely deep down really wanted to, to have a family with this particular woman. I mean, I don't know. You know, I can't... Um, I can't make other people's decisions for them. I mean, everyone's got to find their own way through this. But I, it's worth at least considering that a lot of people in that situation do those things because they think it's the right thing to do rather than they genuinely actually want to do it of their own volition. You know, I remember my dad, actually, um, he my parents divorced when I was young and then my dad remarried my stepmother. And then that relationship um, 
came to an end a long time later. And I remember when that relationship with the stepmother came to an end, I remember my dad saying to me something like, um, cause it was a classic thing that, you know, she, she didn't really, um, it was a classic sort of like, what have you done for me lately? Kind of a situation where, you know, he'd worked very hard and, you know, been head of this company and put money on the table and all the rest of it. And, um, in the end, she was a bit like, yeah, I'm not really feeling it anymore. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to go off with this other bloke and there you go. And um, I remember my dad saying something like to me, like, um, you know, like if I, I, I did everything I thought she wanted. You know, I got the job. I worked hard. I got the house, you know, and he said, like, if like and, and now it turns out she didn't really want that after all. You know, I could have just sat on a beach all my life, you know, and. And that's the thing. And that's the, the that's the the heartbreaking thing is that, you know, you could, I could really doing what I'm doing. I could like sit on a beach, really. I could be, you know, um, and a lot of the responsibilities that we end up taking on that end up trapping us are responsibilities that we have voluntarily invited into our lives. And you've got to be, you've got to at least think about it carefully. You know, you've got to at least look at what you're proposing to do and try and work out if that is actually what you want to do. Um, because, as they say, uh, no deed, no good deed goes unpunished. And, um, you, you know, you, you don't always get thanks for doing the things that uh, appear to you to be the right thing to do. So, you know at least have pause to thought if this channel and my this video and whatever does nothing else at least at least you should have pause to think about these things rather than just like like a robot like going ah social programming i should do this um and and, and just accepting it you know um so in the book harry brown then goes into various uh what he calls traps and um, the traps are, I'll go through them quickly. So he talks about the identity trap. And this is uh, the belief that you should be someone other than yourself. Okay, so you should, that's obviously incorrect. You should always be yourself. Um, identity trap two, the assumption that others will do things the way you would. You can't control others' natures, but you can control how you deal with them. And that's very important, okay, because not everybody is going to treat you fairly. Not everybody is going to treat you well. And basing your life on the assumption that they will is a foolish way to proceed. OK, but what you can do is you can think about the way that you respond. OK, so somebody can treat you very badly. You can't control that, but you can control what you do about it. OK. Um, the intellectual trap. The, the idea that your emotions should conform to some preconceived standard. You're in the intellectual trap if you let your intellect tell you what you should feel. So, for example, you know, it's like, right, I should I should get married. Why fuck that lady and uh, get the picket fence? Intellectually, you think that you should, that's what you should be feeling. Intellectually, because it's an idea, you think that's what you should do. But actually, deep down, you're thinking... Well, do you know what? I quite like to just go to the beach. You know, like, why do I have to do all this crap? You know, um, and you fall into this um, uh, intellectual trap if you if you go with the intellect. You know, you 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 think well, but intellectually, I know that you should, you, you know I should be wifing her up, um, and then that's when you get into trouble. He talks about the emotional trap, which is when you believe that you can make important decisions when you're emotional, which you can't. The morality trap, the belief that you must conform to a moral code created by someone else. OK, and again, this is something that the trads bang on about the whole time, isn't it? It's like, no, you have to do the right thing. You have to do the noble thing. You have to do the correct, morally correct thing. But who made it up? You know, who who made up the idea that, you know, buying a buying a house with a big mortgage and then working hard to pay it off? is the morally correct thing. I mean, who who made these things up, you know? Other people, okay? So it's a misconception to assume that you have to just go along with a moral code that's been invented by somebody else. I'm not saying go out and break the law or anything, but, you know, 
like think very carefully about your actions in regard to other people and their expectations. The unselfishness trap, the belief that you must put others' happiness above your own. You know, again, we're all, we all think that, don't we? We think, well, I've got to be a nice guy. I've got to, like, you know, do this. If I don't do this, then she'll be unhappy. He'll be unhappy, whatever. But why do you think that? Because somebody's told you to think that. But it's not like, you know, it, it's, not, it's, it's not like in, incumbent upon you. It's not like the heavens are going to open if you don't do that. Um, the group trap. The belief that you can accomplish more by sharing and involving others instead of operating on your own. Well, we go back to the Sigma thing again, don't we? You know, like this idea that you've got to, um, you know, you've got to be one of the gang um, and that that's somehow going to be better for you as an individual. It probably isn't. You know, you've got to look after yourself. It's like, do you go out when you're going out to meet girls and to do you know, dating and stuff, do you go out with a big group of guys because that's sort of what you're supposed to do and they've been friends of yours since school? Um, or is it better to just go out on your own and try your luck as a, as a free agent, as a solo agent? Well, in many cases, the latter is better, <laughs> you know, because you go out with the lads and they're all having a drink and they'll spoil your... Um, They'll spoil your sets. They will interrupt. They will get in the way. They'll try and steal the girl, um, whatever. So, you know, again, you know, don't think that, that we human beings have this herding instinct, don't they? It's like, ah, be part of the herd. Um, well, fuck that. You know, like it's your life. You're going to be dead in a few decades. I'm probably going to be dead before the end of this stream. So why shouldn't I be selfish and do what the hell I want to do? Why do I have to include all these other people? You know, why do I have to think about these other random people who would probably screw me over if they had half a chance or if it was if they were going to, in so doing, get something that they wanted to get? You know, so think very carefully. And then there's the government trap, the belief that governments perform socially useful functions that deserve your support. Government trap two, the belief that you have a duty to obey laws. Mm, it's a bit naughty, isn't it? Government trap three, the belief that the government can be counted on to carry out a, research, a social reform that you favour. You know, you want to think about that when you vote for whoever you're going to vote for um, in the belief that they are going to carry out a social reform that you favour. But are they? You know? I mean, don't fall into these traps. Um, right, this is a good one. The rights trap. The belief that your rights will make you free. You're in the trap anytime you count on anything other than an individual's self-interest to cause him to give you what you want. Um... So, and this is a this is a key thing. This is a thing that people fall into this mistake all the time, don't they? Because they think, well, we got married, and she loves me, so you know, um, she is going to do the right thing by me. Well, maybe, maybe not. You know, people in the end act on their self interest. Okay, that's what it comes down to. We are pretty selfish. That's not to say that we can't be altruistic. That's not to say that we can't look out for other people and do good deeds and things like that. But we are kind of selfish, right? And so if you're relying on somebody to act in your favor for any other reason other than it bolsters their own self-interest or somehow helps them, then you are being somewhat naive. Here's another one, the utopia trap, the belief that you must create better conditions in society before you can be free. Save the West. Everybody, let's join hands and save the West now. If we all just say a prayer, if we all just close our eyes, and if we just think positive thoughts about the West, then the West could be saved by the end of the stream. It's, we're saving. It's saving. I can feel. I can feel the West being saved. But no, seriously. I mean, this idea that you have to create a utopian society before you can have the kind of life that you want to have is, of course, a nonsense, and it's a waste of time because um, you know you're not going to 
change the fate of a nation. You're not going to overturn whatever ism it is that you don't like by yourself. You know, it's just not going to happen. So you have to then make that calculation. Well, is it worth the, the hassle or not? Or am I better apportioning my time to something else instead? Am I better looking after number one and then seeing how it goes? Um, and there are, there are lots and lots of other traps um, that he mentions as well. He then mentions uh, something he calls boxes, which are to say, look at the boxes that you are caught in, okay? Look at, the, look at the traps that you're caught in and then work out what will be the cost for you to get out of that box and therefore enjoy more freedom. And he says there's always going to be a cost in everything. So it might be getting out of a relationship, leaving a job, leaving a marriage, uh, leaving a country, you know, whatever it is. There's going to be a cost, but you need to calculate that cost and then work out whether your life will be better for taking on that cost or not. OK, and he says there's always a way out of the box you'll have to pay a price and that's uncomfortable but it's better than continuing to pay the price of staying in the box and the longer that you stay in the box the higher the price is going to be okay um yeah so i mean there's some more i can go on i can do some more um it, so Vin says, what book is this? It is called um, How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World by Harry Brown. Which I put there. Yeah, so I recommend everyone reads this because it is very good and it makes you think. Um so then he's got some rules for life. So I'll just go through the rules for life. He says, the first one is never expect anyone to act from your knowledge, perspective or objectives. Assume that his viewpoints will differ in some way from yours. Never make an important decision when your emotions are dominating your mind. OK, our emotions mess us up. So avoid that. Number three, never lie or appear to be something other than what you are. Unless you're sure that the, your life or somebody else's life is at stake. So be be true to yourself. OK, so if you're a degenerate, be a degenerate. You know, don't pretend to be a trad because you think it's the right thing to do. Uh, never invest any resource, time, money or emotional investment um, that you're not prepared to lose. It's a good one. Never take on a new responsibility or time commitment or liability without recognizing what must be given up to accommodate it. Always leave some free time in your schedule uh, to take advantage of new opportunities as they arise. Never use someone else's property in any way that he doesn't approve on. Never focus your attention on anyone else's weaknesses. Um, don't waste your time complaining about them. Instead, pay attention to what your actions should be in order to deal with him. OK, so again, you know, it's it, it's always like you can't control other people. You can only control yourself and your actions and your reactions. So focus on that. Um, never quibble over a price you didn't expect to pay. Pay it and move on. <laughs> never form a partnership. An agreement in which responsibilities or rewards will be shared for any purpose. That's pretty hardcore. Never have a never have a, a partnership for any purpose at all. Um, I, I mean, look, I, we people talk about this in business because, like, people talk about business partnerships and stuff like that. I am wary of business partnerships. I like to work on my own. You know, this channel is my channel. My business is my business. You know, I do some stuff with other people on a kind of an ad hoc basis. Um, you know, I um, I do sort of affiliate work for, for John Mon Life Dating and some other people. Part of the Rule Zero team. You know, so yes, I collaborate on stuff. But essentially, like I don't, I'm not in any sort of contractual kind of like partnership with anybody as far as business is concerned. Because I prefer to do my own thing. 
and I prefer to have that freedom. Do you know what I mean? And I don't think that I would ever take somebody else on as a partner or anything like that. I, I mean, I'm not even keen to have employees, to be honest. I, I certainly, I work with people on a freelance basis sometimes. You know, people do design work or they'll do some editing or whatever it is. Um, but I don't want anything contractual because I, I prefer to steer my own ship, you know. Um, and then, of course, we can extend this into personal relationships as well. You know, marriage is a, is a, is a great example of an agreement which um, many guys would prefer not to to get into for, for reasons that have been talked about a lot. Um, never become directly involved in violence um, and never forsake your rules because of someone else's actions or opinions. So he's got some quite good like guidelines there for how you can live uh, your own life, a life of freedom. Um, but I think the most interesting parts of that book really are, he really makes you think about societal expectations and why you're doing certain things. You know, and the truth of the matter is that a lot of the time you end up doing certain things not necessarily in your own self-interest, but because you're kind of going along with the program. Black Dragon talks about this a lot as well. Um, you know, um, and so you've got to think carefully, like, why am I doing this thing that I'm proposing to do? What benefit is it from me? What about the cost to me that it's going to have for my for my life, for my time, for my money, et cetera, et cetera. Is that a cost that's worth paying? King Kane says, I couldn't give a toss about the West or any other part of the world. Like Troy said, you've gone in a couple of decades if you're lucky anyway, so what does it matter? Exactly. I mean, like, you know, this, for a start, the truth of the matter is that you're not going to change it. And, and he, he goes into it in the book. He goes into this in the book in, in detail, but he argues, you know, you're not going to make great societal changes. And even if you do, so even if you are involved in a movement that that shifts things and changes things in your society, it's not necessarily going to go the way that you wanted it to go anyway. You know, an example of this is 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 Brexit in Britain because there are people who've spent their whole career, you know, arguing about Brexit and you know we've got to break free from Europe, we've got to go our own way, and blah blah blah. And then it's finally happened, um, and those people still aren't happy. Because in their view, it's not being done properly or it's not being done in the way that they would have wanted it to be done. So even if you spend your entire, you know, like 40 years of your career trying to push for a particular outcome, even if you get that outcome, which doesn't always happen, because remember, the Brexit vote was it was on a knife edge and it could have gone the other way. Um, so often these things don't end up happening. But even if it does happen, it's not necessarily going to be what you thought anyway. So really... Why did you waste all of that time on this outcome? This, which, which is a collective outcome, by the way. It, it doesn't. It's not really well. Maybe if you're in a high tax bracket and it's going to save you some tax, then that's one thing. But you know, it, like, why not concentrate on yourself? Why not concentrate on creating the best life for yourself that you can create with the most options and the most freedom in it, rather than getting behind a big. And he talks about burning issues in this as well. Getting behind a big burning issue which you kind of think, well, if we just got this one thing sorted, then everything would be all right. Um, because you're very unlikely to get the outcome you want. And secondly, even if you do, as I say, it may well not pan out in the way that you imagined that it would. So, you know, my my view is don't waste your time um, on this kind of stuff. You know, you want to be a bit more selfish. You want to be looking after number one a little bit more. And we can go into, in fact, we probably will go into Ayn Rand and her book about selfishness um, at some point, because again, that's very, you know, like even the radical people on the right who think that they are, you know, they think that the left are the lily livered, like liberals and they are the renegades, but they're still thinking collectively, you know, and this is where the libertarian thing comes in. Because the libertarian side is just like, well, we'll screw all of that. I don't really care. You know, the West can burn. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I, I want to do my own thing and I want to get my own, um, you know, my own best outcomes out of it. Um, and that's, you know, ultimately, why not? Because you're only going to be here for a fairly short period of time. You might as well look after number one. And that's what dating strategies are all about. That's what games are all about. Um. That is what, you know, 
learning these different sort of ta tactics for hacking the system as far as working for yourself are concerned. You know, you're putting yourself, you are making yourself your mental point of origin, which remember is what Rollo Tomasi um, says. And uh, Andrew says, society improves when individuals are being selfish. It's not zero sum. Yeah, exactly. And this is what um, Ayn Rand um, argues in that book. So, um, so yes, I mean, absolutely. I, I, I would agree with that. I mean, some would disagree with that, but I, I would agree with that. Are you a libertarian, Troy? Um, in, in a broad sense, yes. And as I say, with a small L, I'm not part of any party or political party or anything like that. Um, but, uh, but yes, greed is good. Classic Adam Smith, 100%. Um, saving the West is a side quest. I mean, you know, look, if you can save the West, but you can do it like at weekends, maybe you could do it like on a Saturday afternoon, just after lunch for an hour or so. If you can save the West like for an hour or so on a Saturday, that's fine, you know, but just have it as a hobby. Like don't make it your main thing because it's kind of a waste of time. So that would be my thought on that. And then uh, David says the, the West is over. It's time for Asia now. Very probably, yes. Um, so listen, I think, because I've got to hit the road in a little bit, I think we're going to leave it now unless anyone's got any sort of like further um, questions. Matt's got a question. How do you game high-flying intellectual career women? Uh, I don't. <laughs> That's pretty much how, my answer to that. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, are Super Chats not allowed? I'm, I'm not monetized, mate, I'm afraid. Um, the Deep State has seen this channel and they're not happy. The Deep State, the Cabal, don't like this channel. And so I am... Um, I'm not monetized, so I can't do super chats. However, what I, I do have a Streamlabs account, which means that if people want to donate to the stream, they can do it via Streamlabs. I haven't put it up today, and I won't because I can't I can't I can't find the link now. But um, I, I mean, I'll start putting that up. I mean, I'm I'm thinking about starting another channel, which hopefully will be monetized, and moving over m moving people over to that. But it's a bit of a ball leg like, because this channel is getting a bit of. Uh, this channel is getting a bit of traction now. You know, the, the subscribers are building up. And to have to then do all that again is a bit of a pain. I mean, like from the – obviously, it would be nice to get Super Chats because it would be nice for me to get some money. And obviously and, – and, and then I can prioritize questions. And it would also be nice um, for me to be able to make some ad revenue from the channel as well. But in a sense, those aren't the most important things to me. I mean, the most – for me, it's good because I can build up the audience using YouTube and then I can get people to sign up for my email list or buy my books or, or whatever. And so it works very well just for that without having these other things. But it is a bit of a shame. It's a bit of a – it's not even – I'm joking about the cabal and the lizards and stuff, but um, the channel is not monetized, but that's not not actually to do with the content. It's, it's to do with a, a technical thing to do with uh, Google AdWords, which is um, – I'm going to try and resolve um, – and if I can't, like I say, I might set up a secondary channel where I maybe do the live streams and I start trying to push people over to that or something. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, no, I'm trying to look at it at the moment. But in the meantime, um, I'm just pushing on with this because it's, you know, as I say, the, the numbers are building up over here quite nicely. So uh, so that's where it is. Um, yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> They do indeed. Um, and yes, this is true. You only get 30% of Super Chats. So that's why actually Streamlabs is is quite a good alternative because you get the full amount, but it doesn't operate in the same way, um, which is a little bit of a, um, which is a little bit of a, uh, a, a shame. Um, what are your favorite cities to get to game? Prague, Warsaw in Poland, uh, Kiev, Moscow, London or Barcelona. Those are some pretty good ones. Um, yes, exactly. Do like Rich does, create a second tap channel, tell, tell you just to add you. I will, I'm talking to Rich about doing this, actually. I probably will do this. Um, Patreon. I don't have a Patreon, but I do have a membership site on Gumroad. Um, so I will – well, I do, actually, wait a minute. So I do have a Patreon, but it's it's only for, like, tips. I'll, I'll drop the link in the description below afterwards. Um how much do you need to make tr 
how much do you need to make to travel Europe? Um, I mean, it depends really on how fancy you're going to go and um, all of that. I mean, a couple of thousand euros, probably, maybe less, maybe a bit more. Uh, but I'd say 2,000 euros, you could be probably all right. Are you from Australia? No, I'm from the Queen's country of Britain. Anyway, listen, I'm going to leave it for there now, guys, because I've got to go and grab some food and then I've got to go out. Um, so it's been great to be on. I will be on again on Wednesday. Uh, so I'm going to do Monday, Wednesday and Friday, and it's going to be 11.30 a.m. EST, which is which is 4.30 p.m. in the UK. Um, and I'm going to do Monday, Wednesday and Friday for the foreseeable. So join me again on Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. I'm doing the podcast that I normally do. I think I'm going to move those to Tuesday. So I'll look at doing the podcast tomorrow. So Mondays we'll have a live stream. Tuesdays we'll have the podcast. Wednesdays a live stream. Thursday something else, maybe a short video. Friday the live stream. And then Saturday, obviously, rule zero, whatever. So that's how it's going to go. Uh, live streams here, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11.30 a.m. So come along with questions, topics, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, please do hit subscribe to this channel because it really helps me to build it up, et cetera. Uh, and if you want my book, my, my collection of books about dating game, the dating marketplace, it's called Renegade Dating Blueprint. Um, it's available for, below on in the description for just $39. And also get on my free email list as well, because that is a good way for me to, to keep in contact, regardless of what happens with this channel and, and everything else. Um, <laughs> love that video where you debated face LMS. He believes only Chad gets laid. Yeah, well, we there was a, <laughs> there were mixed opinions um, on that, um, but I think I mean you know I tried to engage with him to some degree. Um, yeah, it, it is what it is. I think a lot of the haters that came on that show weren't particularly articulate. I didn't really articulate what they were on about very much, so it, was, it got a little bit frustrating. But um, um, will you collaborate with Tom? Well, I already have done on several things. Whether he would come onto a RZ or not, I don't know. That's a that's a separate matter. But um, all right, guys. Anyway, thanks very much for tuning in. I'll see you again on Wednesday, and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye.